Thank you. I have five minutes, so please put your phones down. And this will be my last time I'll be presenting at BYU Hawaii. So I thought, what would I share? And uh, knowing that we have such a great, talented panel of judges, I thought of one, just one item. That's why I wrote down the number one rule to being a better entrepreneur. Real fast, we'll see whether or not this works. Come on. Um, family's growing. I have two single boys. One on, my, on the white shirt is 23, he's eligible ladies. The one on the right is 16, he's only 16. <laughs> Eye candy for today. Love these boys. So I want to talk about how you guys are all wanting to grow a business from one element to another, from A to B, right? That's really what it is. You want to grow a business. If I may, I want you to think of it this way. The future is solely created in the present. The future can't be created in any other place but the present. What an individual creates now determines what the new now, or what we call the future, will be like. Whatever you do now, today, will influence what your business, what your enterprise, what your future will be like today. Most of us call it continuous improvement, but I'll tell you what, the biggest thing that I've learned, and I'll tell you real fast, <clears throat> in the last, ooh, let's see, I was here at BYU, started 35 years ago, and I can tell you right now that I have had seven startups, three of them with existing teams, four from scratch. One went public, three I was able to sell, one was neutral, and two flamed and uh, took millions of dollars away from me. And I learned something, that being, the, uh, being an entrepreneur is constantly about improving so that you can be, become better the next time. And Jason Earl said, why do you keep starting businesses? I like the pain of growing. I really like the pain of growing. It's, you're constantly challenged. You have to continuously improve. Here at school, you're all here trying to improve. How do I become a better business person? How do I get, essentially, the knowledge to be able to use uh, finance, digital marketing from all of our experts here, logistics, whatever, production, whatever it is. But can I tell you, and this is my own, the one singular message, the biggest biggest continuous improvement that you should make because I have done all of these businesses is change the core person of who you are not just the intellectual but the core being you have to change that and I'll tell you why in just a second one of the ways that you can also look at continuous improvement it's the process of repentance People think repentance is a bad word. Oh no, that's when I have to go see the bishop and whatever. No, no, no. Couldn't be more further from the truth. Repentance is becoming a better person today than you were yesterday or than last week. I can tell you right now, this week, I'm less bad than I was last week because I'm a machine when it comes to improving. I've had to be because I had to be ready for these businesses, for these uh, companies that I like to grow. I love this. I love this. President Anderson said, repentance is not the backup plan. It is the plan. That's my message. Imagine that the ability for you to grow a business is based on your ability to repent now. To repent and improve daily. Does that make sense? I'm looking at uh, Adrian. I forgot your name. Aiden. Aiden. You want to be a great entrepreneur, right? Do you have brothers and sisters? Try not to bully them. Try not to get angry at them. And if you can start figuring out how to do that now, you'll have better control of your emotions when you're managing teams and people and employees. Does that make sense? Uh, I've forgotten your name, lady. What's it? Chelsea, I name is Chelsea. Chelsea, 
imagine at a certain point in time, I don't know, you know somebody who's addicted to porn and you go, ah, it's not my business. Care for that person. Go help that person, right? You've got to be involved in changing yourself. You've got to be able to improve yourself at the core level. This is why as soon as your business takes off, it stops from being about me and it goes to we. Business moves from me to we and that means you can no longer be selfish. You can no longer be selfish. You've got to get out there and, and be there. And you cannot lead people. You cannot have relationships with vendors. You cannot manage suppliers. If you're selfish, you've got to be a better version of you. So, my fast thought. Today, start today. Start immediately and continuously repenting and becoming a better person. Study like crazy. I, I read from the scriptures every day so that at the end of the day when all the bad things happen, I won't forget who I am and won't turn into an ugly green monster because I've got to keep my cool. Right? I've got to read from how to manage employees and read from all the great books so that I now know how to motivate them and get them to come to me so that they'll open up so we can solve problems instead of me berating them. I've got to learn that. I'm continuously moving. Uh, on one car ride, I said to my kids, I said, kids, uh, if there's one thing I want you to remember about dad, dad has continuously improved no matter what his faults and whatever, I've continuously improved. And I know it came about because of having these businesses. Because I couldn't be just like the, the last CEO of me. I had to be the new CEO of me. Right now, today, uh, Rob Tejan asks, what are you doing? I have a new startup business. I have three new business partners. It's called Fire Up Capital. We provide bridge loans to commercial developers. I did all my business in tech, in software. And yet I'm doing something completely de uh, different in finance. We help finance between a half a million to $20 million for projects. I have no background in that. But I'm loving it because I'm learning something new. Get it? I'm pushing my own boundaries. I have another business with two different partners. Here we help veterans find new places when they get out of the military to go and work so that they, whom I honor, can succeed. I don't know what the business is. One of them right now is a vibration company that takes out uh, propeller vibrations. This vet is amazing, but he's such a tech dweeb, he has no understanding of business and he's completely screwed up all of his contracts, so we're there to help him. Make sense? That's, so I have two brand new businesses. I got another one actually. Third, uh, on the side, Yes, I suffer from business ADD. So, on the side, I, am, I have venture capital firms that have invested in my business. They call me, tap me on the shoulder and say, Bino, would you please coach this CEO that we just put $15 million into? So, I coach high-performance CEOs. And can I tell you right now, uh, just, just, just to show you it's serious, I charge four figures per hour when I coach. Okay? So this is what I have found. I have found that for many of us Latter-day Saints, right here, last comment, we forget the difference between being nice and being kind. Listen up. We forget the difference between nice and being kind. We are very good at being nice. But sometimes while being nice, we're not being true. We try to say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're fine. That was a great presentation. Yeah, yeah, that sucked. Right? <laughs> right? We just try to put the mouths together. Being kind actually means something like um, Chelsea. That was a so-so presentation. You need to work on this and this and this. And because I, you know that I love you, next time, don't do that again. And that's kind. Believe it or not, that's kind. And if you can learn now to be kind, to be honest, to be able to have a relationship where you can love them and with tough love say the right things, then the inner core of you has become a better person and a better entrepreneur.
That is my advice to you. Until whenever. Thanks so much. Take care.